Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I will going to show how we can create fake caustics in Godot. Caustics are basically curved light pattern which is created due to the refraction of light rays when passing through one medium to another. In most modern renderers, we can simulate realistic looking caustics but that can require much more computation power. So we will cheat a bit and create a fake caustics effect that will look like this. For this, I'm using Godot 4.2 and I have also installed an add-on called Shaderlib. Make sure you get version 2.0.0. With all of this out of the way, let's get started right after the intro. Okay, in our scene, I have this mesh. Now let's create a visual shader. Set the mode spatial. Call it caustic shader. Let's also create a material for our shader. I will call it caustics dot material. Then assign our shader in our material. Now this next bit is little different, so pay attention. Instead of directly assigning the material to our geometry, we will go to its material. And in the next pass slot, we will assign our caustics material. In our shader, let's first create a Voronoi node. It will give us this nice cellular noise. Take its output and feed it into power node. Power node will darken the values which are less than 1 as we increase the power. We will control the power from the inspector. So let's create a float parameter. Let's call it blend and give default value of 5 and feed it into the power node. Now take our power node's output and feed it into multiply node. This way we can control the intensity of our caustic by increasing this value. We will do that from the inspector. So let's create another float parameter node. Let's call it intensity. Give default value of 5 and feed it into the multiply node. Then take our multiply node's output and feed it into the albedo. Now we can see the caustics, but the rest is all black. To fix it, take another output from power node and feed it into the alpha. Pretty cool. Now in the Voronoi node, the cell density controls the amount of cell. We will control it from the inspector. So let's create another float parameter. Let's call it density. Give default value of 5 and feed it into cell density. Now we have this pure white caustics, but when light ray gets refracted, it may disperse into multiple colors. To mimic that behavior, we will sample the same Voronoi node three times. So let's just duplicate it. Now let's offset all three of them in different directions. For that, we will use UV function node with mode panning. Now we can use this offset to pan the UVs, take its output and feed it into Voronoi node's UVs. We will do the same for other two. Let me just create a float constant to demonstrate the effect. Now let's offset the first Voronoi node upwards. For that we will change Y component. So let's create a vector compose node. Select vector 2 from the drop down. Take our float constant and feed it into the Y component. Then take our vector compose node's output and feed it into the offset. Now let's offset second Voronoi node to the left side. So instead of Y, we will change X component. For the final Voronoi node, we will offset it to the right side so we will just invert the x value and to do that we will use negate node. Now let's combine all three Voronoi nodes together using vector compose node. Now we can see what happens when we change this float constant value. We have this nice chromatic effect. 
and we want to control this from the inspector so let's just replace our float constant with float parameter I will call it chromatic strength set the hint to range and you can experiment with the values here but I find the value of 0 0.02 works nice so set the range from 0 to 0 0.02 Now take our combined Voronoi noise and feed it into the power node. In our Voronoi node, this angle offset offsets the cell of our noise. We will offset them over time, so let's create a time variable. Then to control the speed, let's create a float parameter. Call it angular speed. Give default value of 0 0.2. Let's multiply it with time. Then take our multiply nodes output and feed it into angular offset of all three Voronoi nodes. Lastly, we want to scroll over noise over time. So let's create vector 2 parameter to control the speed and direction. Let's call it scroll speed. Give default value of 0 and 0 0.2. Multiply it with our time. Now we also want to preserve our chromatic offset. So we will simply add the multiply nodes output to vector compose nodes. Then take add nodes outputs and feed them into offsets of UV function nodes. Finally, let's adjust our material to see how our effect looks in the scene view. And it does look nice until we add our effect to other objects. There is a disconnect like our backdrop caustics don't match with these two objects at all. The reason is we are using default UVs of the objects to apply the texture. We want to apply our texture parallel to XZ plane. Just like we lay our bed sheet onto the bed. It is really not that complicated but this bit took me on a really wild ride. Basically you just need a vertex position you just convert them from local to world space. Combine X and Z component. And feed it into UVs of UV function nodes. And at first glance it looks like we are all done. Until we move the camera around. And I was going crazy that what is happening. Initially. I thought I just messed the vector transform node and it is not working as intended. In reality I was just confused because I read in the documentation that vertex variable returns position of vertices in local space which is partly true. It returns position in local space but in vertex processor. In fragment processor it returns position in view space. View space means relative to direction where we are looking. In simple words, relative to camera direction. So moral of the story, read the documentation properly. Now you might think that okay so we just need to convert the vector from view to world. But it won't work either. Because vertex position will change when we look from a different angle. So we can convert the vector to world space, but the end result will not going to be the same for two different angles. We need vertex position in local space. To access that, we will use variable called varings. If you don't know what that is, don't worry. Varings are basically variables to send data from vertex processor to fragment or light processors. If you don't know what are processors, I have a video on how to get started with shaders in Godot. I recommend you to go check that out. 
anyway so we can get vertex position in local space in vertex processor so let's go to vertex processor click this manage variings we want to add the varying variable so add varying vertex position is vector 3 so select vector 3 in type drop down then let's call it vertex local then we want to pass it from vertex processor to fragment processor so select the first option from the drop down and hit create then to set the value we will use varying setter node select our variable from the drop down let's get our vertex variable and feed it to our vertex local let's head back to our fragment processor now to access the vertex local here we will use you guessed it varying getter node select vertex local from the drop down now we have vertex position in local space let's convert it from local to world using vector transform node and we will use xz component for our uvs now our caustics will match for all objects and i think that's pretty much the video if you find the video helpful consider hitting the thumbs up button wishlist cosmic roads on steam subscribe if you haven't already if you have any questions post them in the comments that's it from me and i will see you guys in the next one